Hi everyone, this is Josh from Calvary Chapel, Eldoret. This is uh, your weekly announcement as we know and realize that so many things now in the world are online. So online, we want to bring you these weekly announcements. Before I announce the changes happening at Calvary Chapel, Eldoret, this coming midweek service on Thursday and on Sunday, I'd like to just give you some uh, to, f for you to be aware of things that are happening in the world from a biblical perspective, okay? There are four restrainers of evil in the world today. Always has been this way, and um, the scripture teaches us this. Four restrainers of evil. A restrainer is somebody who withstands evil, that drives darkness away, that drives evil away. Four different institutions for different restrainers of evil the number one is the human consciousness the human consciousness is influenced by the very fact that we are created in the image of god now i'm not for a minute saying we don't have original sin and we are born with the capacity to produce righteousness we're not but we are born, though fallen, and born sinful, and born in, dead in our trespasses and sin, because we're created in the image of God, we have a consciousness, uh, some call it the objective morality. Children, you know, they know it's generally wrong to go stab their brother and sister in the neck or something. That's the human consciousness being created in the image of God. That is a restrainer of evil that restrains us that that inner voice you could say that speaks don't do it don't do it though we have evil desires to do the things that that consciousness that image of god in in us tells us not to do that's the first restrainer of evil the second one would be the family or parenting the bible talks about if you spare the rod you'll spoil the child you are to, we are as parents, to discipline our children. We, we spank them when we need to, we instruct them, we rebuke them, we train them in righteousness so that, that, that when they're older, that they will not leave those things that they've learned from their parents, those righteous, godly, Christ-like things. That is a restrainer of evil. We restrain our children from practicing evil through discipline, and that's an institution from God. The third one would be government. In Romans chapter 13, very clear. Uh, it's a very disputed scripture, especially the last five months. But the Bible says, let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no, no authority except from God. In other words, God instituted the government. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. So he instituted them, he appointed them. Therefore, who resists the authority, resists the ordinances of God, and those who resist will be, uh, bring the judgment on themselves. For rulers are not a terror into good works. Now, I don't want to do an exposition of this today. That there, There's a lot there, but the government is not supposed to be a terror of good works. They ought not to be. They are at times. But the idea is a government is there to enforce laws to restrain the lawless from having their way in a society we arrest murderers we arrest thieves these sorts of things that is a restrainer of evil okay now the fourth one is the one that i would like us to focus on this next couple minutes because it is the greatest restrainer of evil so great that it's the only institution that says that the gates of hell will not prevail against in fact, the consciousness of man has been completely marred and holistically destroyed by a, the sin that we have. We're born dead in our trespasses and sins. So uh, though we may have an objective sense of morality, we have no power to fulfill that morality. That's the consciousness. That's been uh, infected big time. But the church, the Bible says, the gates of hell will not prevail against. And that's why the church is not only essential as the debates go around, it is the most ins essential institution, even more than government, than any other institution in the world. It is vital that we are in 
assemblies in fellowship together, studying God's word, partaking of communion in prayer, baptizing those who need to make their faith in Christ public. It is the church and the church has been attacked and attacked and attacked and attacked these last months in a way that we've never seen in our lifetimes. So Calvary Chapel Eldoret is all about the church. We are a church, but we're all about the church and society, the good churches, discipling, sharing the gospel, fellowshipping, helping, loving, nurturing, all the things that we're supposed to be doing. But it's not just a group of leaders who do that. It is the collective body of Christ that does that. Everyone who is a born again believer. Very important to understand the importance of the church. Now, this week, we are welcoming our children back from ages six and up. We are welcoming our children back. Though we won't deny, by the way, even the younger children. That's just what the government has said. So welcome your children. Bring them. The, Jesus Christ says, don't suffer the little kids from coming to me. Bring the kids to the church. Bring the kids to Christ. Our Sunday school rooms are uh, which we're calling Adventure Land now. We're trying to really uh, do better in that ministry. Uh, welcome this Sunday. They will be open. Your kids will be ministered to. Um, our three services will have all three will have children's ministries. Our Thursday midweek service will have children's ministry. Okay, so bring your children. Our first service on Sunday is 830. The new time will be like 8.30 to 9.45. Then we'll have from um, 10 to like 11.15. And then our third service is changing the time, not by much, but it's 11.45 to 1, 1.15, around there, about 1.15. 11.45 to 1.15, about an hour and a half service. Those three services, bring your kids bring them into the children's ministry. Now the difference that will happen as per before the coronavirus is that kids ages um, zero to eight will go to their designated classes before worship. Okay, for the nursery, they'll go into the nursery and for the other classes, they will go into a sanctuary of their own, a kid's chapel, where they will do their own music, they will do their own, and then after their worship, they will split into their ages and go to their different classrooms. And that is specifically designed, number one, to minister to those kids in a different worship environment that is more interactive, but secondly, so that the parents can come into the main sanctuary and worship in an adult environment without the distraction of their kids. We are now going to allow kids from ages zero to eight in the main sanctuary at all. And then even the kids from nine to 12, after the adult service, they'll be in the adult service with us. After the adult service, they will go into their own class and will not be allowed in the sanctuary during the adults Bible study. It's not a suggestion. It's not, if you want to, you can bring your kids in. What we're telling you is respectfully obey the rules that we're setting so that in the main sanctuary, we can create an environment without distraction so that we can focus on the word of God. But also so that the other kids can be in an environment where they're not um, uh, constrained by an adult environment and they're more have an interactive worship time. This means, parents, that you have the responsibility of bringing your children before church starts to sign them in to their classrooms so that you can be to the church service that you will be attending on time. I continue to promote the early service for those who work on Sunday. They can come into the early service and be a part of fellowship, as the Bible says, do not forsake the fellowship of believers. As you may have seen, I'm here with my daughter, who's very excited 
to be back in church this coming Sunday, right? Good. And we hope to see your children there. We hope to see you there also Thursday or midweek service from 6 to 7.30 now. 6 to 7.30. Those are the different times that we're doing. And I pray that you'll be mature and responsible enough to get your children back into church. May God bless you from Calvary Chapel, Elderette.